Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining today. We um, usually have these releases every quarter, but this one was such a big release that we had our spring release split into two. So this release, the big focus was saving our users data entry, um, trying to really take all of the feature requests that we got that we could easily implement that would benefit all of our users. So we're going to go through some of the, um, a lot of the settings today on how to get all of this set up. And then we'll go on, go through some of our add-ons that we've updated, some calendar updates, um, and we hope you enjoy. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and take over and we are going to start with some of the updates that we made with case management tools. Um, so a really big update that we heard a lot of feedback on and we wanted to really improve so that you could get the most out of it is the calendar feature. So when you log into Next Chapter and you're in the firm dashboard, you'll now see the calendar is um, has been improved. It looks a little different. So we've kind of freshened it up. We mirror some of the features that you'll see if you use other calendars, such as um, iCalendar or Google Calendar. Um, so simple things such as if I come in here, I can now add an event directly into the calendar. And when I click on that, I can name it anything I'd like. And then I've got all of my cases here. So I can actually assign it to any of my um, clients directly in here. That's going to actually add the event back into the case as well. I can include the event location and a description. And then we've made it a, a lot easier to add in the start and um, finish dates. So I can choose that it's going to be you know, tomorrow. And then I can also enter in the times here too. A lot easier so you're not having to type that in. Um, so that's one update that we made within this. But then I can go into these existing events. And now we have a little bit more information that you can see within this um, calendar update. If you are a pro or woe account subscriber, you have an added benefit um, to where you can actually click on this orange sync calendar. And then you can copy and paste uh, this URL here so that you can sync it with any of your um, personal calendars that you have. So one of the updates that we made with this is that information such as the location, um, that's all going to be added into the calendar here too. So if I add in an event for um, one of my test cases, show one as an example here. So I have a hearing for Steve and Sarah Sample. I've got the start and finish times. Um, and then I've got the event location and then any additional information. This is all going to save into your calendar if you do have it syncing between your personal account um, and your next chapter calendar as well. One other thing that we have, it's a part of the add-on, is if you purchase Next Message, which is our uh, client text message notification system, um, and if that client has a cell phone number for the debtor saved in the case, you can also, also set a reminder. So if I want a text to go out um, to Steve and Sarah Sample, I can choose if I want it to go out two days. I can choose between hours and days of when I want that to go out. And the text is going to include um, the title of the event, the date and time of it, and the location. So you can remind your debtors um, of any upcoming events that they have on their calendars. And this automatically will go out for me once I hit save and close. It will go out um, in the time that I've set here. So that's a nice way to kind of set these up and not have to worry about it. And then the reminders are going to go out to your debtors. They can actually reply back to those too. So next message is actually an add-on feature, and I'm gonna go over some updates with that um, here in a minute. But as I'm talking about the calendar features, I did wanna mention that, because um, that's a, a, I think it's kind of a cool update that we've made in here. Um, okay, so then another update within the calendar feature is another feature for Pro and Woe accounts. If you are subscribed on a Pro and Woe account, you have the ability to add um, next chapter notices and what that does is it's actually going to pull all of the notices for your cases directly into Next Chapter. And then it's going to assign to your cases as well. Um, well, with this spring release, a really big feature that we added is the ability to pull out any hearing dates, um, the times, the location, the type of hearing, and actually add those directly onto your calendar in Next Chapter. 
So if these set down here, I've got a status conference, the date and time, this was actually pulled into the account for me. So that's what these dates are on here. So here's an example, uh, again, of one, this is what it would look like if we pulled it from your notices. So again, if you're on a pro and well account and you had the notices set up, we're gonna assign it to the case, add it directly to your calendar with the time and date, include the judge's information, the courtroom, um, where the, the location of the hearing is gonna be, and then also any of that docket text so you know what it pertains to. So if it's a 341 hearing, this will be pretty simple, but for this one here, you can tell it's related to a motion for relief. Um, so we add all that information in here. This is all done by automation. Huge time saver. Um, it's gonna save from having maybe a, a, an assistant or support staff having to go through and parse that information manually. This will do it directly for you. So this is a huge benefit for um, users and a great reason if you're considering the Pro and Well account to make that switch over because this could be um, really big with time saving as well. So now I'm gonna hop into a case here and show a couple more case management features. Got Mary Lamb here. Um, so one thing that we added, this was a, a user request we hadn't considered, but we thought it was a great idea. It's a really simple thing, but we have our tabs over here for you to keep track of the case when you're in the case dashboard. So there's the document checklist, your task list, and then events. So those hearings will get added in here as well um, if you do use the hearing scheduler. But within the tasks, um, you know, if you go through here and you're keeping track of the case and you want to quickly see where are we at in this process, we now have a little checkbox here to hide those completed tasks. So when I did that, it updated so I only see the things that need to be done. Um, and it actually holds here. So if I go out to another section, go back in, and I wanna quickly see, okay, where are we at? Um, I'm still only seeing the uncompleted tasks, uh, just to make it a little quicker when you need to do a quick check on a case here. Um, and then while we're here, I also wanted to uh, remind anyone, maybe you didn't have a chance to make it to our last spring release webinar. Um, as Katie mentioned, we did split this one up into two. Uh, there is a cool feature we released that I some people don't know about still, and it's kind of hidden, so I always like to point out. Uh, within the fees tab here, you have the option to keep track of the fees. Um, this is just for case management for yourself, it's totally optional if you'd like to use it. But you can go in here and add in any fees that have uh, been accrued within the case. I can edit these, name them anything I'd like, put any amount that I'd like, and save it. And I can click to add any new fees as well. Um, so if you've got a court filing fee, if you want to, um, if you've got the credit report fee, anything that your clients need to pay for, and then you can actually add payments as they're received as well. So when I add a payment, I get to select the date that that was paid and the amount here. Oops, and I'm going to go ahead and just put an amount in here. So that updates the balance down here. And what's nice is every time uh, the client makes a payment, if you'd like, you can click download receipt. And this is actually gonna generate a receipt that's got your firm's information, um, these fees and the payments directly on it into a PDF. So you could use this when your client's in the office, if you wanna print it out, provide a copy of them so that they're up to date. And it, again, it has those dates of the payment on there. So you can see where you're at. Um, and when last payment was received. And then it's also gonna show that balance for them as well. Do wanna show this, I'm gonna give it a second. We are on our testing site today. So sometimes it does take a little bit longer than our application to load. So we'll see how, let me give it a little refresh here. Let me try it one more time. If not, we'll move on. Here we go. <clears throat> so again, and that's normally how long it takes. It's pretty quick. We're going to put your law firm's information. Um, this is going to look like it was generated by your law firm, not by Next Chapter. So this isn't branded with Next Chapter's information. Um, so this is solely for you to provide to the client. We've got the client's name, um, your information, your contact number, your website. If you've got all this saved in your settings, that's where we're pulling that from. It's going to have today's date, so they'll know when this invoice was generated. 
And then it's going to show all of the payments and um, any of the fees and at the very bottom, any outstanding balance here. Um, so again, not everybody knows about this. I think it's a pretty cool tool and I just wanted to show everyone so that you can use that if you'd like to take advantage of it. Um, and then really quickly, I did want to show too, um, as part of that hearing scheduler, when you're managing the cases, if you are on a pro and well account and you are taking advantage of those notices and the hearing scheduler being saved within your case, when an event is added, if it is a 341 hearing, if I go into filing information, not only is it going to be saved up in that case dashboard as a 341 hearing in the events and in the firm's um, calendar, we're going to have it saved here too. And then what's nice about that is, again, if you use next uh, message, which is our text message feature, you can use this to say um, in your settings, you can set up what we call a recipe to set up for messages to be sent out in accordance with this date. So if the date was for um, next Wednesday, I could say that the day before on Tuesday, I want a reminder to go out to the client, letting them know that they need to bring their ID, where they should park, um, any information that you generally provide to the debtors for their hearings to make sure that they're prepared. You can put that in the text message. Um, and then you can also see those text messages in the case dashboard here. And this is where those get added. Um, so with that, I'm actually going to move on to the updates that we made for next message. So not only can you now set individual reminders on calendar events, um, we've also added an option to send a um, the CAN spam act, this text message here, allowing your client to opt out of receiving any messages. Um, so you have the choice of whether this is sent or not. In this example, it was sent out to uh, Mary Lamb. So if she doesn't wanna receive text messages anymore, she can simply reply stop back to this number and it will stop those messages. You can turn this on, on a per case basis. So I'm in the case setting. So this is specific for Mary Lamb. Um, I can turn it on or off if I'd like. And then also any of those recipes that I created. So in our test account, um, if I want them to, you know, if I don't want them to receive text messages, I can do that too. So we give you complete control, even on a per case basis. That's also in your settings. So if you purchase next message, you go to account up here and then your account add-ons. This is where you can purchase it. And then we have the settings for next message. So in the settings, if you purchase it, you are going to get a firm um, designated number. So you're not having to use a personal number for that or the firm's number. And that's where text messages can be received and sent. And then this is the new feature that we have uh, released, that ability to turn this on or off for all of your cases, that text stop message if they want to no longer receive those. So that's in here and that's a new part of it. The other thing I wanted to mention with our add-ons that we did make updates in the spring release is My Chapter. So now if you have purchased My Chapter, um, or if you're interested in purchasing My Chapter, it is a debtor portal, an online intake for your clients to enter their information, um, upload documents, and then they can submit that to you for review. Once you've reviewed it, you can send it back to them with any additional instructions, um, or you can import all of that information and all the documents into the case in next chapter. Um, if you purchase it, you do have the ability here in your settings to change any of the welcome message that you'd like for the client to see when they're about to enter their information. You can upload your firm's logo. You can choose who will receive the email notification when they have completed that information. And then we white label it too. So we, we put in your uh, firm's contact information, anything you'd like here um, for them to reach out to you if they have questions. And then a new thing that we've added in with this release, um, and this is based on a lot of feedback that we've heard, you know, there are other products out there that help with the intake. Uh, but one of the pain points we heard is that, you know, some clients would prefer to have less information shown to their debtors of what they want to complete. So if there's a section, these are all the sections within my chapter that your clients can enter their information. If you want to turn off any of these sections so that they don't see it, you now can use these toggles to turn that on and off. So if for if I'm using credit reports and I would just prefer to not have them enter in their creditors, I can toggle that off here. If I live in an area and I just don't want to confuse them, I don't want farm and livestock, I can turn that off as well. I can also click on any section to add in any additional instructions. 
Um, so <clears throat> if I always ask when in the intake process for the clients to make sure when they're putting stuff in here, we just want the dependents relationship and ages. We don't want their names. Um, and I want that further instruction. I can add this in here. And then that's what's gonna be included um, in my chapter. So I'll actually hop in to show you what that looks like. Let me see one that was just done. So those instructions are gonna be right here. So now I have the dependents, and then right here is those additional instructions. Please only list the relationship and age, don't list their names. So the attorney and the paralegal, you can add in whatever you'd like into the section to direct them to however you'd like them to input that information to make sure it's saving you time and not making you have to update any of that. And then also any section that's been omitted, as you can see over here, the creditors aren't listed, so they're not gonna be prompted to add that information. Um, okay, so now I'm going to hand it back over to Katie, and she's going to go over some of the updates that we've made um, within the cases as far as case uh, preparation of the petition and schedules. So I am going to jump right into account settings. This is where a lot of this stuff will just need to be entered one time. Um, so you've had the option to set up common and default creditors for some time now, and now we've just expanded this ability capability to a bunch more sections. So if you are using, um, you know, common courts, if you're using the same court over and over and over again, you can create a common court in here, name it anything, and then it'll start to auto populate in the case just as the common creditors do. Um, the same thing can be used for if we scroll down to the left here, and these are all under um, in your settings under the firm defaults section. So the same thing can be done with common insiders. If you have common insiders within cases that you just want to set up one time, and all that this is going to ask for is the same information that we're asking for within a case. Um, you can also set up common companies as well. So um, if you're using the same companies, and these are going to be most beneficial to like the insiders and the companies within business cases. Um, but I'll show you in a case momentarily where you can add all of those, but this is where they can all be set up. The one that will be set up just a little bit differently is common assets. So we've had a lot of users say like, we use the same household goods every case, we um, exempt the full amount allowed and we don't wanna type it in every time. So now if you come create a new common asset, it's gonna ask you the type. So these types are based on, um, like you can add a personal item, a bank account. These are the types of um, the options in the personal items category within your case. So if we do a personal item, then it's gonna ask for the subtype. So the subtype would be the household goods, the jewelry, the clothing, um, basically just to match it exactly to how you have it in your case. So if we are going to exempt or do just do common, household goods, use every case, name it whatever description. So whatever you put in this description will be um, the title that's used in the case. You'll be able to choose any of these from a drop down. So we have the value in here, it's optional, but like I said, some users will just always claim the full value um, that's allowed with your district's exemption. So for this example, I'll just do 500. I'll save and close that and now I've added a new common asset. So now when you go in a case, so let me just jump back into Mary Lamb and I'm adding household goods. So in personal property, and these are all the different, um, the items, money and accounts. These are where those headings are in your settings. But I did a personal item and I did a household good. So when I add a household good, I now have a common asset dropdown where I can go, I just said I'm gonna use the common household goods in every case. It pulled my value over and it pulled my description over. You can also, if you're adding them through the case, so if I come here and add a new household good, um, you can save them as a common asset through here as well. So again, it works similar to common creditors where you can save them from the case itself or you can get them set up one time um, in your settings. 
back to account settings um, and the same thing back to firm defaults. We have a new section called petition defaults. So these are any, we're trying to, um, we're going to add to this and these are just requests that we get from users where they're doing the same thing every single case. So for this instance, we had a firm that selects disputed, unliquidated and contingent in every single claim. So they asked us, you know, is there a way we can just default that? So those boxes are checked in every claim. Um, and we added that. So if you find yourself, if you're a pro or woe well subscriber and you find yourself using maybe the same language, um, I know some people have to use the same language every time they add a vehicle or using the same thing um, throughout the petition. Any type of default that you think would be beneficial to not only your firm, but maybe um, other users as well, go ahead and send Mandy or myself an email or a chat and we'll be happy to look into that further just to see if it's something we can add. So right now in petition defaults, there's um, only one item in here for the default claim settings, but we want to keep expanding on this and adding on this um, just to help you all in your time management as much as possible. There is also, um, you can set up a firm filing template in here as well, but I'm actually gonna go to um, just uh, the case to show you how that can be done too. So we have some users in districts such as our examples in Mississippi Southern, um, I know Colorado, some of the Florida districts. So not everyone has been lucky enough to get those districts where you can just file everything all at once. So there are some districts where you have to divide out um, those means test forms, maybe your attorney disclosure. So we have want, we have been asked numerous times if we can set up some kind of template. So for this case, I'm gonna come in and do the standard review and file page like you're filing your case. I'm just gonna delete all of these out to get them out of the way. Um, so what you would do is, you know, you're gonna file your complete bankruptcy petition here, and then you need to add in all of those means test forms, maybe your disclosure to the right. So if I choose, um, my chapter 13 means test forms. I'm gonna go ahead and choose, um, I can't find it right now, but the, yeah. the attorney disclosure. So now when I'm in here setting this up for filing, let me find my attorney disclosure. It can be dragged over to the proper event code. And same thing, and I am actually on a chapter 13 and not a seven. So these will need to be saved separately based on whether you're working on um, a chapter 13 or a chapter seven, just because they have different means test forms. So let me quickly choose the chapter seven forms here and drag those over. So I have my statement, nope, my seven form here and my other form. This, case, this doesn't case doesn't have one. So if you have um, this template set up, so you have your, what will be filed as your petition packet and then all of your event codes. If you always have to move those means test forms over, you always have to move those disclosure, um, attorney disclosure of compensation over, you can now save this as a filing template. So if you save this and we wanna call it our chapter seven template, because these um, seven, the chapter seven means test forms, click save and close. Next time I come back, so let's pretend I file this case, I come back to review and file, and I'm filing my next case. There's now an option from that drop down where you usually select your petition. So in assemble PDF packets, you can now choose that seven template. So now that I've chosen my seven template, it moves all of my standard forms over and it puts everything where I've identified it. So my means test forms are in the right, my disclosure of compensation is in the right. This only works for the next chapter generated forms. So you can't set up templates right now with um, your credit counseling certificate, your chapter 13 plans, any forms that aren't generated by next chapter um, will still need to be added as event codes. But for these districts where you have to separate everything out, you can create templates you can have as many templates as you need, but it'll just save, you know, it's one click rather than dragging and setting everything up and it eliminates mistakes as well. 
And like I said, you can do that from review and file, or you can set those up from your settings tab as well. We also have um, a new download and print layout. So download and print now looks very similar to review and file in that all of your available forms are in the left column. Everything that will be dragged into the middle will be merged into one packet that you can download and anything in the right will be separate. The reason that we changed this is so you can just do one click to download everything. Um, before you'd have to select one page, print it or download it, come back, select a page, download it. So now with this, for example, if I just wanna do the complete bankruptcy petition, just like you're you used to, you can just select complete bankruptcy petition. This statement of social security and creditor matrix text file are always automatically in here to be filed separately or to be downloaded separately. So when you proceed to download, you will be asked for a social. If you don't want the statement of social security, you can delete it, same with text file. And when you proceed to download, it won't keep asking you for that social. The way I have this set up right now in here is this is all going to be merged and I'm only downloading one petition. But let's say I want to just down, I want AB to be separate and maybe I want schedule EF to be separate. So with this setup, for an example, these forms will all be merged in a packet, but then it'll also download AB as, it's in, as an individual form and EF as an individual form. You can add as many additional PDF packets as you need. So if you wanna do every single form separately, just keep adding packets and keep dragging those over. You can also have as many forms in these individual packets as you want. So for some reason you want AB and Schedule D downloaded together. Um, the whole page is really, you know, you can download whatever you need to download, however you need to. This um, features are still here within this dropdown for amended forms, signature pages only, and emergency filing forms. So if you're amending something, click amended. Again, if you don't need these, the social um, and the creditor matrix text file, just delete them. And then anything you move in the middle. So. For this instance, this example, I'm downloading an amended Schedule C, that is it. Um, I don't have any additional packets, I don't have anything else in here, so that's all that would download. A few other just time-saving features we've added, especially for those of you who use our credit reports, is that now on all of the claims tables, we are showing you the addresses. Um, let me jump into one that has a few more examples in there. So people were, um, you know, importing these credit reports and maybe two claims out of 50 didn't have an address and they weren't able to easily identify which one didn't have an address. So now you'll notice in all of the claim sections, the address is right beneath the creditor's name. So this should help you be able to take a quicker glance to see if anything's missing right away. Um, so you can go in and get that added. Another thing that people kept asking for is in properties owned, in the property, they were used to putting in a percentage of property owned rather than just the value. So this is a new field in here, the percentage of property owned. If the market value is 800,000, let's say we put in 20%, the value of the portion that you own will be updated in real time. So it's just, you know, saving you any manual calculations just to be able to put in that quick percentage and the value of the portion you own will be updated automatically. I believe that covers the majority um, of what we have added. So again, we just wanted to make your lives easier and let you set up a lot more custom defaults. Um, and it's especially nice if you can just get everything set up in your settings tab. So then any newer employees don't even need to, you know, they won't even know how to drag and drop those templates because they'll already be in there. So just a way to reduce any um, data entry mistakes, keep it all clean um, and correct. And like I said, keep your suggestions coming. We um, really appreciate them and take them into consideration.
Um, we do have a question. Someone asking if we can use, if you can use next chapter for chapter 11. Yes, you can. So on the homepage here, um, it'll ask what type of case you want to start. And if you choose a business, you can do a business 11 here. So um, there are, we do have a help center link. So we have a help bar and, or a help menu item in the menu bar that will take you to our help center. And we do have a whole section on business cases. Um, we've been adding in the ability to file those. So we do have a list on here of which courts Next Chapter is currently integrated with for those business electronic filings. If we're not, you can still start a business case. You'll still have the um, 200 set of forms. You can download them and everything. Um, we're integrated with most courts, but yes, you can start and usually file a Chapter 11. Okay. I don't see any questions. Oh, there's one more question. So there's just a question about the common asset. Someone was checking in the settings. Um, and that's actually going to be added probably by tomorrow morning that you'll see that in there. Um, <clears throat> so again, we were showing you on our, our testing um, uh, atmosphere here so that you can see it and see what it looks like. But we had to make a couple final tweaks before we could put it on production. So the two features that we showed today um, that if you hopped into Next Chapter right now, you won't see. but um, within a couple hours to tomorrow morning, you will see, and that's going to be those common assets, common companies, and then the template filings. Um, download and print has been updated, so that section will you will see as an update now. Um, a lot of the smaller features we, we showed within the cases, and then also the calendar feature, the hearing scheduler, that's all done. It's just the template filings and then those common um, additional features within the settings. Those will be in there very, very soon. Our developers are working as we speak to push that over for you. Um, so we, we still wanted to share today, show you guys what it looks like. And then um, if you hop back in here soon, you will definitely see those in there. Awesome. OK, well, it doesn't look like there's any other questions. So um, feel free to reach out to us if you get started with these features. You do have any questions, suggestions. We are here and happy to help. Have a nice day. Bye.